No matter how old the Song of Zion, it should always have a fresh meaning. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey. We are starting a new five-part series, Worship That Never Ends. But remember, we're looking at this through the eyes of the psalmist in the book of Psalms and the Holy Bible. So how can we have a song, a new song, that never ends if the worship never ends? Well, before we get there, we want to thank you for watching. Please like the video, hit that thumbs up wherever you're watching. It makes it easier for other folks to find it. And subscribe to our channel. That is how we stay in touch. And above all, please share this with someone else so that they can be blessed too. With that said, how can we sing this new song? Well, 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 how in the world can we sing then an old song and it have fresh meaning? How do we participate in this new song? Whether it's a way back when song of Zion or whether it's something new that's produced. I know in this culture where everything has to be hot or everything has to be new, new, new. The old just seems to not have value, but good music and good worship experiences grow deeper as time goes by. But 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 how is this possible? Well, first things first. The first thing to understand about having that new song with a fresh meaning, Psalm 40 verse 3 says, He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Off the top, we see that the first aspect of having an old song but for it to be able to maintain its new meaning is that that song is a gift. That's a song that God puts into our mouth. It is not something innate. It is not something natural to us as humans. It is a gift that we are experiencing when we make that transition from living by the flesh into now living by faith in God. That puts now a new spirit in us. His presence is in us. And with him in us, we give voice now to our experience of being saved. We give voice to that change. So that's the first thing. The new song has to come from a new spirit. It has to be a gift from God himself. Not only this, in Psalm 98 verse one, it says, a song, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Songs of Zion. Even the new song is God-centered. It's not based on what I have done. It's not about what I have accomplished. It is about what God has done. And if it's about me, it's just showing then what God has accomplished in me. That's the only part I play. I am the pot. We are the pots. He's the potter. And a new song is God-centered. It's focused on his activity. It's focused on what he has done in our lives. And it's about God's power that now redounds or it echoes literally in this new song. But one more aspect of the new song. That's in Psalm 149 verse 1. And it says, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. While the song belongs to God in a very real way, it is sung by saints. When we think of music and when we think of praise, God does not want that praise that can't exist in a vacuum. He doesn't praise himself. In fact, he made us for that sake so that we would have the ability to praise him and so that he could receive praise from his people. This is another thing about that new song. It doesn't really go down as well in a club doesn't really work as well in a secular context. It might sound good stylistically. It might be appealing to certain aspects on the physical level, but on a spiritual plane, nah. It, it can only really exist amongst those who have experienced God's power, who have witnessed God's goodness, and not just by eyes, but by affection, not just by head, but that head now translates to the heart. These are principles that we will find that help us to experience the new song, even if it's technically something that's old, knowing that it's from God, knowing that it's about God, and knowing that it really resounds and it really, it really flies amongst the people of God. I pray that we find meaning, whether it's in our personal or even in our family or even in our corporate worship, by understanding that worship is like God. It only gets better with time.